Christmas time is here. What was his name again? Clarence? The Peanut? No. What? Charlie Brown? <laughs> Clarence Brown? No, Clarence. <laughs> Charles Brown? Chad Brown? Chucky Brown. Chuck? Good old Chuck? Uh, no, the one. <laughs> Fuck, I'm, now I'm losing my mind. The Sim, our Sim. Oh, Chauncey Bliss. Chauncey Bliss, duh. <laughs> Who is Chauncey Bliss? Do the music again. Do the do the music again, and I'll I'll introduce the episode. Christmas time. Welcome to, me. and that's why we drinks December Hustle listeners Hustle episode, Hustle where we read Chauncey your Bliss creepy stories and Chucky e. Cheese. Hey, welcome to the show. There should be a crackling fire underneath all this because this is the holiday spectacular. <laughs> 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 Welcome to December's The Last Listener episode of 2023. Good. Can you believe it? Hey, <laughs> can you believe it? <laughs> I I can't believe it because I feel like I just got used to it being 2023 and now I have to write a whole new digit when I'm mixed signing up. things. I'm like, it I can't know. be November. But now it's December. Um, I bet if we listen to every episode like we do this every year, we probably every, every year, year go, can you believe it? And then it's realistically, what year does it feel like? Ignore what time is. When to you... me? Yeah. 2021. It still feels like around there for me, too. Right? It feels like yeah. we kind of went into COVID and then it's like just kind of time like froze almost and nothing else sort of ma- like time just stopped working. It feels like the clock broke, you know? Yeah, I mean, we all kept saying we felt like it was a glitch in, in the system or something, but it does yeah. feel like we just we're still in. I feel like I'm unconscious, and when I wake up, it'll still be 2021. That's exactly. And I've just been it. in a two year dream. <laughs> what a time to be in a dream to keep working in said dream, Ugh. and you know, oy. and still needing like constant therapy. Yeah, <laughs> taking constant <laughs> medication therapy <laughs> in your coma. Yeah, uh, that's pretty on brand for us, I think. Um, Anyway, everybody, welcome to the show. Today, I have a special surprise, which is that Eva gave me a special surprise and said I get to read the first three stories all by myself. (laughs) I don't know what's going on. Maybe I've just, it's clearly that I don't know how to read. And so now we're just, Christine's taking the reins. I don't know what the situation is. We didn't want you to feel that way about it, but I guess if you're the one bringing it up. No, Uh, that is not what it's about, I promise. It's because um, I have with me today... Uh-oh. As I always have with me, my woo! dignity. Oh my god! <laughs> no, I lost that a long time ago. <laughs> um, I have my Dust Bowl survivors. Oops, my cowboy children. <laughs> like all of my if- Victorian photographs um, uh-huh. here with me. And Eva said, "Um, the first three stories are in relation to that." So I said, "Oh, oh boy. my god! Can I don't you know imagine if three of them emailed you." <laughs> I'm a Dust Bowl survivor, and it is not okay for you to make fun of us. <laughs> I'm one of the little cowboy kids that lives in your closet. And I'm 250. I've been listening to you. <laughs> yeah, I can hear everything you're saying about me. And I and don't my... know how else to get to you because you can't hear my voice, but maybe you'll see this. Yeah. Maybe you can read my typing. Um, I am the woman with the hat, and I need you to stop talking about my hat. Um, I am the hat. And I honestly, am the hat. I am the star. You were right. Thank you for the validation. You were right. And keep talking about me. Um, okay. So <laughs> here's the first one. This is called, oh, by the way, if you're new here, sorry. Also, this is where we read listener submis- submitted stories. Um, that's why it's called a listener's episode. You nailed it. And also, what are you drinking on, on your oh, last listener's episode of And That's Why We Drink? Thank you for asking. I'm drinking a body armor because when I was breastfeeding, I got kind of into these. And then I had to take a break because I was like, I don't even want to look at those anymore. But then now I'm kind of back into it. What are you drinking? Oh, is it meant for for? No, it's just like me- it has coconut water and stuff. So it's like hydrating, oh. but it's like tastier than just drinking water, you know, and it has some sugar in it. Nice. Um, I don't know if it does anything, but like I feel like when you're breastfeeding, you're not, not really sure. You're not sleeping. Anything that a listicle says to do, you're like, mm-hmm. okay, I'll eat cookies and drink yep. <laughs> strawberry juice. Like, fine. So. Um. I'm drinking a cream soda. Ooh. And with that, let's <gasps> crack into it. Okay. That was really delightful, actually. That was like a perfect Did... crack it open. Can you sizzle, hear it? Sizzle. 
That's actually I the can't. fireplace you were talking about oh! earlier. <laughs> That's perfect. I'm going to need you to hold that there the entire show. Um, I was going to say, editor, editor, can you please, um, can you isolate that ambiance and put it underneath the entire track? Thank you so much. Just enhance, enhance. (laughs) Okay, uh, let's hear it. Let's hear hear your first of a trilogy, please. And I got to be honest, like, I have no idea what that means. I know it's about the pictures. I'm like, what do you mean? Is it the hat? I don't know. We'll find out. So we'll find out together. This came from Lindsay. It says, hello. It's me. I'm the problem. It's me. <laughs> hey, girl. <laughs> me <too. laughs> uh, I just began episode 352 where Em and Christine talk about the box of hundreds of pictures Christine received. I sent them. Holy shit, Lindsay. Oh. I knew your name started with an L. I don't remember if I said that in the episode, but I was like, it was like Lane or Within the Lucy. first sentence, we've cracked the case. Hilarious. We came in right at the end of the year. We figured it out. I love that they started with, I'm the problem, it's me. Yes, you are oh, correct. Oh, now it makes more sense. It makes sense, doesn't it, now? I get it. Uh, I sent them, I'm sorry, I live in Indiana, <laughs> and because most of the photographs were local-ish, I sent them to Christine. A little background, I started collecting these photos from antique stores as a child. Whoa! Whoa! <gasps> Because they intrigued me and kept on collecting over the years. I estimated about $800 worth. Over the past few years, I would hang six or so in frames on the wall to display my collection and rotate them out every so often. That's what I was thinking of doing. Oh, that's fun. My husband accidentally knocked one frame off the wall. Uh Uh-oh. A picture of a man and paranormal activity spiked. Wait, okay. Why do people do this to us? (laughs) Which man? Now I have to figure out which man. Is it the hat? Wait, also, wait. So... (laughs) So as soon as things go wrong, you get rid of your eight hundred dollar haunted collection and give it to someone else. I love that. You're like, you know what? Now it's been real. I've had them long enough. Okay, it says nothing sinister though. Fast forward to early 2023 when I was putting my baby back to bed after waking up in the middle of the night. He had a death grip on me while I was putting him in his crib. I've always been able to sense spirits, and I now knew he could as well. He was over a year old and still hasn't slept through the hadn't slept through the night. My husband suggested it was because of those pictures and that I remove them. I took them down the next day, and from that night in March, he has slept through the night ever since. I didn't want to. Now your baby will never sleep again, Christine. (laughs) Great. (laughs) Wait a minute, Leona hasn't been sleeping as well as usual. Um, I didn't want to get rid of them, but knew I had to and also knew I had to do so carefully. I listed them on Etsy, but no hits. I listed them on eBay and was instantly banned for putting the eBay community at risk. What I'm an the avid- hell? What the hell? I'm I feel avid- like eBay loves, eBay loves haunted They're shit. All what are you talking about? that shit. That's not fair. Mm. Uh, I'm an avid listener and your podcast came to mind as to where I should send them. I debated on who, but decided with Christine. I love how she's like, I debated sending them to M. I'm like, you shouldn't have even had the You made a good call. Your beautiful collection would have been gone in like seconds. Now knowing it was valued at $800, I would have felt like a piece of garbage that they would have been in garbage. That's what made you feel like a piece of garbage? Not that she's collected these since she was a child and they're all meaningful? Okay. Well, I I don't know the price of anything. Now to find out it's like nearly $1,000, I would have felt extra bad. Well, I think what she's saying is she estimated that she had spent about $800 worth on these over the years. I know, but that's to me that means it's valued at that. that (laughs) That's a lot of value. Yes, that's a lot of money. Um, she was the winner. Christine was the winner. Great. As far as them being haunted, I feel there is a strong likelihood it's the one you showed, uh oh, on the episode and called Walter. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That that the energy is crazy if that's the case. That's crazy. Okay. Or potentially the one lone woman who may be missing her right arm. Oh, what? The There's fuck? one in there without an uh, like, arm, I'm Christine. You, I haven't even looked at all of them yet. You know, like I looked at them with you. I haven't gone through every single one. Um, oh my god! And then my fair part is that it says, "Sorry, I didn't leave a note." Good luck, Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, Lindsay, I feel like we want to, like, I want to blame you for this, but also part of me thinks when you are figuring out where to send them, I feel like my like astral spirit was like send them to me send them to me send them to christine like hey, hey and mine hey. was like send it to christine send it to christine don't send <laughs> it doubled to me. up yeah that must be it so um i feel like the universe was like send them to christine and honestly Lindsay, i've grown so attached to them i love them so much a few people have sent in saying like can you send them to me and i'm like no i like them i want to keep them and you gotta find the one without an arm and you have to hang you have to hang up hat girl i love hat girl i do too i i'm glad i finally know where they're from because i feel like now i can kind of approach it you know i'm like oh okay now i feel like 
this was sent with love and not like <laughs> a curse or something. If any of them had any names, they we do. could do a little. Do, they do, do. Do, 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 do. Okay, I was gonna say on ancestry, yeah, my skills and your skills together, we could write a narrative. Well, like my pal Stephanie on Instagram posted, like, "Hey, I'm not kidding. Please, like, send them to me. I do like basically what she said was, I do this a lot. Like, I go get photos from antique stores and I." post them on the right family trees so that people can like Mm. and then i can mail them if they like reach out i can mail them the hard copy and i was like what a noble pursuit but also i'm so conflicted because i'm like well maybe i can try that i mean i don't have the skills i'm sure stephanie technically could you just take a picture of each one just send them to her and be like well here's your own copy of them (laughs) here you go here's a i'm gonna scan these i'm gonna fax these to you i'm gonna fax (laughs) you a tin type uh to look (laughs) no and so i feel bad because i haven't responded to stephanie but i'm like i'm trying to figure out and now i feel like since Lindsay has collected these over her whole lifetime i don't really want to just like i mean at least they would be in safe hands i don't know they're i'm just gonna hold on to them for now until i kind of have a better plan but i guess i should read story number two now that Lindsay has been outed as the Mm, problem mm -hmm. okay so it looks like the rest the last two stories here are like um because i asked people to tell me what to do with the pictures so it looks like people are submitting some potential plans this one says uh this is from ash she her hers and it says hi atwwd friends i listened to your new episode 352 today oh by the way if you're wondering about these photographs it's episode 352 that we discuss them and wanted to reach out with a suggestion for your photos my mom is a professional genealogist who works for free she sees genealogy as a religious calling and spends hours every day researching people's families and trying to return vintage ebay family photos and bibles back to the correct families like that's what stephanie was saying Fun story, whenever my sister and I brought a new love interest home growing up, we would do everything in our power to keep our mom from learning their last name. That's literally, (laughs) is Leona in the chat right now? Like, I feel like this is something she's going to say about you one day. Yeah, for sure. This is because my mom would immediately research 10 generations of the person's family, and it took her 15 minutes once to locate an ancestor that my sister's boyfriend's family had been searching for for 20 years. Holy shit. My mom is also contracted for the FBI to locate folks in this way. Whoa. Anyway, I imagine if you're able to scan. Okay, that's what you said. Scan the fronts and backs of the photo. My mom may be able to help return them to the proper descendants. You won't even have to mail them or anything. Between you and me, my mom has a lot of free time. (laughs) Between you and me. (laughs) Okay. Between you and all of us. Your mom has a lot of free time and loves to do this work. So don't feel bad. Well, I don't have a lot of free time and I also love to do that. So like, don't worry. I don't judge at all. Um. So don't feel bad for capitalizing on that. She told us once as kids that she loves her dead ancestors just as much as her living children, though we always knew better. (laughs) And then sent her contact info. I love that, Ash. Thank you. I might actually... I might actually use that contact info because I'm still trying to figure out my own family stuff. I will say, too, like Stephanie posted. And by the way, if Em and Christine, if you ever need like it sounds like she does this like very same kind of thing, like very Mm. almost professional level. And um, I was like, yes, Stephanie, I do need help, please. Um, So because I want to learn more about my house and I haven't been able to find anyone to like help me track trace back. So, yeah, here we have a couple people now who are able to help us. This one says, uh, let's see, from, I don't want to say their name because I, they didn't sign it. So I'm just going to say, ha, it's from K, letter K. Hi, Christine, okay. M, and Eva. I'm just watching today's episode where Christine is showing off her strange collection of old photographs, which is Jesus. my favorite thing ever. I have a degree in collections management. Okay. Like, what who the are hell is people? going on here? You guys here? are like the most interesting people I've ever met. I feel like you accidentally tapped into like an industry where Incredible. everyone's like, this is my moment. I'm going to like, reach wait, out. what? I didn't know. We all we had to do was show like a lady in her hat. Okay, let me just like, start photo? showing weird things and people <laughs> see just... what see who like pops out of the woodwork. <laughs> that would be that would be a fun podcast if we just hand a random listener an item, just a random item. And then a week later, they come back and tell us everything we, say, we found on it. We just say go. Yeah. see what happens we'll yeah, see you later you do this. all the work we'll host we just it. sit here <laughs> yeah 
If Christine plans on keeping them or some of them, there are archival kits online that will be perfect for storing them. Mm. If she wanted to donate them to a historical society, maybe sort through the Cincinnati ones or if there are Kentucky ones and see if they would be interested in them. I would offer to take them in, but I think they are best in her hands, LOL. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. She's like, You're I right. don't, she's like, I know better. I know Christine's never mailing these to me. Well, also, um, like, I don't want them. Like, I probably, like, I don't uh, need them. No, yeah. I don't want them. <laughs> and also, Kay has probably, are. oh, sorry, C- Catherine did sign it. I just, it was in between some links. Catherine did sign it. Um, So Catherine already heard Lindsay say, oh, yeah, like, <laughs> ghost activity spiked so uh, Catherine, i think you made the right choice not requesting the photographs um mm-hmm. i would offer to take them but i think they're best in her hands lol i've put some links down below for the archival kits these are albums and these are boxes and kits okay this is fucking great Ooh. i'm so thankful and that way you can for preserve them christine yes exactly because honestly i feel ju- i just f- was feeling bad because they were like in a half a zard pile over there and i thought like well, I don't want them to get like more damaged, can, you know. Can I can I say ignore everything that everyone has said so far and give you my idea? If you must. So, I think maybe you should we should come come together, you and I, and create like a really really like I here's the situation. I would like Leona at like 14 to climb into the attic and find these and think that she's <laughs> discovered a mystery. So like I'm thinking like put them Make in an, an archival kit room. so they're preserved, <laughs> but like also put that box in like a locked like a lock safe box, box or right. something. And yeah. put like do not touch. Do so not that when touch. she's a and teenager, then, like, she can be like, ooh, let me open this. And honestly, that'll probably keep her out of other trouble. If I'm like, I'll set up some rules for you to break so you don't now have to go out of your way. That's top tier parenting. That's it's good like parenting. I don't want you to do drugs, so I'm going to create a, a like a 15 year old escape room mystery, and <laughs> that will really keep you occupied. And you just like chain it up and like put like maybe a lit candle next to it or oh, something. Oh, yeah, I'll light and, a candle over and over so that like by the time she finds it, it's like the wax has oh, all yeah. kind of congealed. It looks really Absolutely. creepy. And then just like like maybe like a like a random note, and it says like the last person to ever see this blah, 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 blah. like something i don't know like just give her an adventure you know maybe i'll put them in my will just in case if something ever happens to me and i'll be like these are for m and m has to keep them I'll all commit. safe i'll <laughs> commit to the safe box idea i won't hold on to them myself but i will put them in an attic near your child for sure i can promise <laughs> wow, you that. thanks in fact they're already <laughs> in an attic near my child but thank you so much for your help em. um but Thanks, M, for your input is what I'll say. And for it's everyone always, else, it's always needed. Genuinely, thank you for your input. And that one I actually mean. So I um, mm-hmm. appreciate it. I appreciate it. And I feel so much more enlightened about these photographs now. Lindsay, thank you for sending them, but also not thank you. And also, like, I still don't forgive you for sending them in the creepiest way with no note. Because, like, what were you thinking? But also, you should have sent them in a safe box. You should have sent it. Like, honestly, you were really bold melted to candle just... all over it and a note that said whatever you do don't open because then christine would have like been obsessed you know, i would somebody out there can you send christine something in a lockbox with a sign Please. that says do not open and don't leave a note no don't do that i get really freaked out okay i will say Lindsay, you really were brave to just send these with no note because i think if you had said like i collected these since i was a child i would have probably been like much more careful and like i mean i've been careful with them but like if you sent them to M without a note, they'd probably be gone. So I'm I'm very uh, impressed that you were brazen enough to just send them with no note and hope that they ended up in good hands. But you were right. I'm really um, I really love them and I'm attached to them. So that's yeah. You definitely made the right call. Yeah, I think so. Does she have both arms? Do we know? Uh, you know, it's looking like that's a yes on this one. So you I'm know, gonna it'd be fun to... if you splayed them out upside down and then you pulled them like tarot cards. Do a spread. Do a little spread. Okay, I love that idea. Okay. Anyway. Anyway, turn. my turn finally. You can okay. talk now. Well, if mine is like my if my note is like a or my letter that I'm about to read, if it says something like I have I have something I'm sending to Christine. It is more pictures <laughs> of more dead people. <laughs> Are you in or out? And I would be in to help you get them. And I mean, honestly, I'm, so. I'm in. Like, honestly, at this point, I'm kind of loving this adventure for me. And I'm loving that everyone is so kind and supportive and helpful. And like, listen, maybe I'll start collecting these. I am deeply I enchanted see, by them. I could see after the podcast you becoming a curator 
yeah of like an oddity antique shop where with all the things that people sent you over the years and now yeah. you're like giving and I back keep them all I know you do. Yes, you know well. As M you needed a big well. ass house to put all of it. I so. did, and I have my <laughs> attic now filled with creepy stuff. Oh. Oh, okay, here's mine. Oh, okay, mine is better. Okay, here we go. Ready? Phew. What is it? The subject line. First of all, the person who sent it, their name is Bandit. Okay, amazing. Oh, I love that for you. Um, and the subject line is Josh Duggar. <gasps> And his rehab center. <gasps> so, fuck? my dopamine is rising. Yeah, so Eva nailed it. Thanks, Eva. I get Thank it now. Thank you for the okay. holiday presents. <laughs> this is a gift. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, okay, it says, hey, Christine, Em, and Eva, I'm using a fake name. Okay, Bandit, I see. Bandit's a fake name? No way. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't know if this was like from like your neck of the woods in Kentucky. Someone oh, would it could very bandit. well be. Or like a dog, maybe. I had a dog named Bandit. Anyway. That's probably why. <laughs> I had a yeah. um, stuffed panda named Bandit. It's a great name. It is a great name. And I, the, uh, okay, anyway, okay. I'm using <laughs> a fake name in case uh, if anyone from the church listens. I'm sorry. Is someone from Josh Duggar's church listening to us? Stop. And resp- That's scary. I have. I need to take more for praying My per- oh my god. Okay. Uh, if anyone from the church listens, which I doubt, since it probably goes against our beliefs. Okay. This <laughs> may be a long one, but I think you'll enjoy this. My dad, my dad's side of the family is part of North Love Church, and we are kind of a big name in the church. Oh <laughs> We're god. kind of a big deal. <laughs> oh my god, I'm having like full palpitations. I don't okay. even know what that is. Is that a thing you know? I don't know about the church, but to have a, to be a big name in a church. Oh, yeah. They... No, no. That's crazy. For example, they built a room on the church and dedicated it to my grandpa when he passed. Whoa. Oh, so North... they're a big name in the church. I'm sorry. I understand now. Okay. Yes. yes family. Yes, yes, yes. Got it. North Love or its rehab program, Reformers Unanimous, uh, is the church program that glorified that they had cured Josh Duggar from oh, his evil ways. God's sake. Okay. My dad is the black sheep of the family. It sounds like you are, Bandit, but okay. <laughs> Bandit, um, I have a literal panda named Bandit, so I think if there's Bandit, a you're reaching anywhere. out to a show called And That's Why We Drink <laughs> after your grandpa was dedicated a room at your church. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we know My dad the is the black sheep, sheep of the family because he rebelled against the church. So growing up, my sister and I weren't a part of that world. I see. Phew. But the rest of my dad's side is still fully in it. My cousins, <laughs> all seven of them from one uncle and aunt... Uh, they couldn't watch TV unless it was sports and the TV was hidden in the closet in their parents' room. The woman couldn't wear pants and it was either skirts or culottes, culottes, uh, culottes. culottes. I think it's culottes. culottes. I think, uh, my aunt sewed most of their clothes for them. They grocery shopped within the church's co-op. My aunt also homeschooled the kids while my uncle would be working because the man had to do the work. After they finished first grade or so, they would go to the church's school till they graduated to go to college. The men would actually go to college to further their education while the women went to find a husband. Wow. Cool. (laughs) Different life than me. Cool, cool, Um, cool. (laughs) Then when they got married, the pastor of the church, Paul Kingsbury, would go on an hour-long tangent about how the woman had to submit to the man and fulfill all of his needs and wants. Disgusting. Um... My favorite, the no, my favorite thing when it came to our families coming together is that my mom is the one who held our immediate family together. So my uncle would have to talk to my mom about any plans. My mother told me she would aim for my uncle to make what she called the know your place woman face. (laughs) Just to piss him off. One of the most vivid memories at the church was attending one of my cousin's graduations. They had a preacher who worked at Reformers Unanimous there. He was talking about how he turned 16 and bought a car. He looked into the crowd and said, and do you know what was in that car? A radio. And the whole (laughs) church gasped in horror. And I sat there confused. He continued on saying that because of his radio, he turned to drugs and alcohol all due to the evil living in it. Oh, for God's sake. Oh, because of the devil living in it. I'm sorry. The devil's in his car. Okay. Oh, shit. Um, (laughs) 
<laughs> Which like, like a story that, that for is, us to read. <laughs> that is a, a Duggar thing too. That to hear anything with drums uh, channels the, the devil. So seriously, like the, even Christian rock is supposed to be like the devil trying to tempt you away because what it sounds f- enough like real rock that you're gonna They're go trying to trick you. Sure. Yeah. 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 God. Okay. Um. So you're only allowed to listen to like really like like orchestra gospel essentially that's like the only music you can listen to and like church hymns and stuff so listening to the duggar episode recently i was like holy shit this sounds really familiar Uh then the next day out of the blue my mom mentioned josh duggar and how he went to the church for rehab and i knew i had to write in because there has been some scandals within the church now oh you don't say um you're having a moment (sighs) apparently reformers unanimous was a bunch of bull and really didn't do anything for rehab besides manual labor and reading Bible verses. Plus it was full of people who were child abusers and the program didn't really do anything to keep them away from children. Sure. Mm, Sound familiar? Excellent. Then pastor Kingsbury who founded this program, he was abusing and grooming. Allegedly more than 20 women have come forward about this. (gasps) Woof. That's bad. The church t- uh, tried to bury this with his resignation and leave it at that. Kingsbury says he's innocent and nothing happened. Here is his direct <sighs> quote. There is nothing, nothing that has gone on in the ministry or has gone on all these years that has ever been just put under a proverbial rug. If you lift the rug, it's clean under there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> He's always had such a bad vibe to him. So reading that quote the first time really gave me the creeps. I could go on with more stories about living that close to basically a cult, but I'll leave it there. I hope you enjoyed this little bit of tea, Bandit. And then it says Gemini's Unite. <gasps> we. Oh, we knew you were a Gemini. There's no doubt. Like we should have known. We should have like, known. I have from gossip. The Guess who I am? Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. What, I, for what? a second, I thought we were like there was an update about Josh Duggar at in prison or something. I was like, "What? Oh. Mm. We gotta Ugh. turn on our Google alerts. Turn um, on your radio. Oh no, I would never. That's danger zone. The, um, the devil's territory. Yes, the devil's territory. Uh, okay. Wow. Okay. So here I have one now called the ghost priest in my home. Oh, for God's mm-hmm. sake, that's a little too scary for me. This is from Tyler, he, him, uh, and it says, hi, that's why we drink team. I'm Tyler, he, him, and I've been listening for a year now with my girlfriend, often in the car and while cooking dinner. We love the banter and enjoy hearing what you have all been up to. Now, here's my story. I grew up in a small town in northern Wisconsin. My parents' home was a third house built in my entire hometown and was constructed in 1899 for the local priest. That's like my mom's house was built for the, like was bought by the Catholic Church and an archbishop That's, lived there or something. It sounds like, yeah, and the, the, the pastor or the priest was like one of three people in your yeah. entire town. Whew. That's wild. I guess they, starting off a town, they're like, we need a priest. And yeah. that's it. Starting, yep. We <laughs> and need two people to go to church. And yeah. we're good. <laughs> <laughs> what more could you ask for? Yeah, okay. Uh, it is our understanding that the first priest lived here until it was sold in the 1920s to a local family. When the priest occupied the house, funerals were held in the main entryway. Oi. God. Okay. Mm-hmm. This fueled the creepy vibes throughout the house, but especially in the basement. We were told that during the winter months when the ground was frozen and the mausoleum was full, bodies of the recently deceased were stored down there in the basement. Oh, boy. Girl. Mm-mm. Girl. We have the original blueprints that one of the lumberjacks put together when they began digging out the foundation. The basement is shown as a perfect rectangle in the drawings, but this is not the reality. One of the corners of the room is walled off in an eight foot by eight foot square. (laughs) Goodbye. Guess what? No, thanks. (laughs) Ew, I have goose cam. Yuck. When my father pointed this out to the realtor, the story is that the lumberjacks uncovered a huge rock in that spot, and since they did not have the heavy machinery we do today, decided it wasn't worth the effort to remove the rock and built around it. While this could be true, my friends often claim that behind the walls is the body of the priest who once lived in the house. I, them and yeah, I are your friends. Absolutely. We're like, yeah, guess what? That's not a rock. That's a dead body. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> for sure i'd be like that the rock is a bullshit story and you yeah. know it you, you know, know what the it. rock really means right in lumberjack yeah, ex- speak it means mm-hmm. dead priest okay exactly 
another odd fact about the basement is the door. My mom loves the doors. She adores she adores them. <laughs> I don't think that he even realized that he made that pun. She's constantly reminding us that they're original. This sounds like my mother also. And over 100 years old. She refuses to replace the doors or the door handles, even though some have stopped working altogether. Yeah, we never had doors that worked at my mom's house. The door to the basement always seemed odd. It came with a deadbolt lock, but on the first floor side, which means the lock was installed to keep someone or something in the basement. There this is no literally your house. Don't you have locks on the inside of the doors? Uh, at your mom's house? Um, yes, that is true. Yeah. Yeah, this is so that far um, true. Yes, this is it's so far. It's all adding up. I, yeah, I think I've been in this little... house, actually. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, wait a second. Is this my brother? Who's emailing this? Um, <laughs> this seems really familiar. Uh, there are no other entrances to the basement, save a very small window. So there's no rational explanation as to why a lock would be necessary. In 2014, I came back from college for winter break. One night, I went to sleep in my childhood bed and was awoken by someone saying my name. I woke up a little bit freaked out, told myself it was only a dream, and tried to go back to sleep. But I couldn't shake an uneasy feeling. I finally opened my eyes to a, this is a new one, lime green figure standing at the end of my bed. Lime green? Lime green. Okay. <laughs> It was, was Gumby. It, I was going to say, is it like <laughs> one of the aliens from Toy Story? <laughs> yeah, that's the only other thing I could imagine. Okay, sorry to joke because then Tyler says, the figure was a man with sunken eyes. Staring oh, at shit. <laughs> it was salad <laughs> fingers or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Tyler's like, um, I was scared and you guys are making fun of me. When we're scared, we react with jokes that's this is our defense mechanism we're not making can you imagine though if if tyler had the courage to look at that creature and go okay salad fingers like, relax. <laughs> okay <laughs> nice try <laughs> you're not even relevant anymore it's 2014 <laughs> go back to youtube okay go back to 2005 uh the figure had no discernible features other than the glowing green skin uh. i quickly learned that my flight fight freeze response is freeze yep isn't that fun when we learn what our <laughs> As it's happening, yes. Yeah, you're like, oh, that's interesting. It's like, oh, I guess I just don't move or function. Or oh, think. I guess I'm paralyzed. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't move or look away from the figure at the end of my bed. The figure leaned forward towards me. I could feel it set a hand on my leg and continue to climb onto the bed. Ah, okay. girl, no, get out. <laughs> this is like, I know. Horrifying. I know you're frozen. I know you can't do anything about it. But get the fuck out. <laughs> I know that you're reacting in the only way your body and uh, nervous system know how. But don't do it that way. Do it a different way. <laughs> but uh, you're wrong. <laughs> but you're wrong. <laughs> okay, this gets worse, believe it or not. Okay, because it says, at this point, now imagine it's holding onto his leg and is climbing into his bed. And at this point, the figure begins speaking. <gasps> I know. Why is that so much scarier? I don't know. Uh, it says, in a voice that sounded something like someone... Ew, attempting to mimic an old-timey creepy witch voice, I heard the apparition whisper, Oh, God, <laughs> sorry, I'm scared. Okay, I heard the apparition whisper, Our Father, who art in heaven. Abs girl, no, this is not real. That's just not the truth. That's, I hate you, this so much. I ew, hate, ew. I hate to break it to you, but that didn't happen. <laughs> it didn't happen. Oh, my God. At this point, the figure reached a hand toward my face. And just as the apparition touched my face, I heard it conclude its prayer. Hallowed be thy name. Oh, my God. The figure's hand didn't touch my face, but seemed to go through me. I could feel it. Oh. I can't believe it's still happening. Like, you'd think if this was just like a dream or whatever that you would have shaken out of it by now, you know. But, like, it's still going. Also, if it's in your face, like. Where's where's a good place for it to be in your face? Like Ugh. in your mouth? Are you tasting this thing? Is it like, in your where, eyeball? Is it in your yeah. brain? Is it in your ear? Tickling Did you get, around like, in there? Brain freeze when it went through your head? That sounds <sighs> stupid, but I'm and like, was it wet? Wondering. I feel like this finger was wet. Ew, you know? It was very green, like and glowing. It sounds like it would be wet, like moldy or something. Damp. Um, damp indeed. Uh okay. The figure's hand didn't touch my face, but seemed to go through me. I could feel a burst of cold air hit my face, just as the figure's hand did. As quickly as it appeared, the figure was gone. Okay, this is traumatizing. I know that this we tell like, even, ghost stories. This isn't and stuff, even. That's like, why we drink anymore. This is like out of control. This, this isn't is Josh like Dogger. This isn't your little pictures. This is crazy. <laughs> this is traumatic. 
I was left alone in my bedroom, confused and terrified. It took a few minutes, but I was able to calm myself down and remind myself that ghosts aren't real. Yeah, I mean, that looked real and felt real, but it had to be a dream. Sleep paralysis. That's it. Has to be, right? I told myself this was just some weird dream or sleep disorder and didn't tell anyone what I saw that night. Over winter break, I worked mornings at the local grocery store. A few weeks had passed since my midnight visitor. That's one way to put it. And I got up at my usual 5 a.m. to get ready to head to work. When I went downstairs, I found my older brother awake and watching TV. I asked why he was awake at this ungodly hour. And he looked at me and said, this is going to sound absolutely crazy, but I saw a ghost in my bedroom. <laughs> oh, my God. And then Tyler says, I froze, which I to which I uh -huh. say again. OK, uh, <laughs> I froze. My mind was spinning. I asked him to describe what he saw. D holy shit. Sorry. Here's the brother's description of what he saw. It was a lime green figure standing at the end of my bed. It reached up and touched me on the nose. But you know the scariest part of all? The whole time I could hear it whispering the Our Father. <laughs> Roll out. Pack your bags. We're gone. O-U-T. No oh, time to my pack God. your bags. We're out grab a go bag what does that even go. mean and like it's a horrible because it also it's like a combination of ghost and alien because i've never heard anything in the realm of of paranormal that's green let alone lime green what about ectoplasm isn't that green yeah uh, but like ectoplasm isn't alive is well it? i know like, i'm just like trying to like equate but, it to something i don't know but also for something to be able to speak one speak english two to know our prayer okay but i think it's the priest why is he lime green well that part i don't know he spent too much why time is he in that putting his basement. fingers all over people's faces okay but see i have a guess about it well let me read the rest of the story in case that okay. it comes up but i have a okay. guess about what's happening um my brain tried to rationalize what I was hearing. My brother had to be messing with me, right? But I didn't tell anyone about what I saw that night. And there was no way this was a coincidence. Maybe we both recently watched a movie that planted the idea in our subconscious. That had to be it. But even if that's true, my brother isn't the prank type. He's been described as, quote, a man without a sense of humor. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a real class act. It's <laughs> really what funny a catch. to me. What if he was like, by me, I describe him that way. Right, right, right. Um, Pulling a prank or joke like this would be very out of character for him. He also looked absolutely terrified sitting in the living room with all the lights on and the TV playing at 5 a.m. I walked away from him without saying anything. It's hard to describe how I felt at that moment. All I knew was that I had to leave the house as quickly as I could. It's been eight years without a sighting of the figure my brother and I saw standing at the end of our beds. Is it all a crazy coincidence or were we visited by the spirit of the house's original owner whose body still rests in the corner of the basement? Maybe that's why he's green. I'm like not even kidding. Like maybe he's just been in that mildewy basement, you know? <sighs> so um, it is damp. It's very damp. Uh, P.S. My mom also believes their cabin is haunted and claims she saw a Bigfoot and felt a ghost all in the same night. But that's a story for another time. Wow. What a wow. Doozy. Uh, okay. Here's what I think. Which, again, like, what do I know? Nothing. But here's my theory. A priest doing last rites on someone, I'm oh. pretty sure that is, like, what they would say. Like, they would touch And they your would face, put their hands, yeah. Yep, and they would say, I think, I mean, I haven't had that happen to me, thankfully, but I, I'm pretty sure that's, like, the Catholic but okay but why sacrament. is he putting his hand on your knee and crawling up onto the bed okay that part <laughs> good point good point and why point. is he if it was really just a residual haunting i would imagine it keeps happening in the exact same spot of the house not going into different That's rooms true. and recognizing when someone's awake to interact with them and saying their name i just I, you know no, what you're... it's one of those things where i don't need to know the answer all i need to know is that it's time to leave that's <laughs> I like how I'm like, I'm just going to sit here in the house, in the haunted house and figure it out. And you're like, no, no I'm like, time for that. <laughs> I've seen what I've needed to see. It's it's time. It's best we call you haul and just let them handle it <laughs> from here. Um, I am curious, like maybe it's like because there's also like anointing of the sick. Like, I don't know. Maybe mm -hmm. it's some sort of weird twisted version of like a sacrament he used to perform. You know, yeah, like maybe it could be. That's, some... I mean, that's the that's the most logical thing I could figure yeah i don't know though like i don't really know how that i mean again like you said why would he be climbing the bed i don't know that's fucking horrifying and also like i'm very sorry because that is very scary tyler and i know we laughed but i would be petrified 
So I would be laughing as it was happening, I think, out of complete right, shock. That, I'd be like, how we this react. It can't be happening. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, say it with me. Thanks, priests. Thanks, um, priests. Oh, my God. I didn't even. It didn't even cross my mind. Oof. Yes. Thanks, priests. All right. I've everything. got one that should be less scary, I hope, although it is titled Beneath the Floorboards. Um, <laughs> okay. That can't okay. be anything good. And this is from Brittany, who's a she, her pronouns. Thank you for normalizing pronouns. And it says, hello, all. I just moved in with my girlfriend. Okay. Okay. And <laughs> <laughs> see, it's Sorry, Tyler. Bad. Let me say what Tyler. Tyler, PM, if you're gay, uh, please driving weigh in. With his girlfriend. Oh, straight. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, heteronormative. Yeah. Uh, hello, Tyler, all. I just like, moved- can't get a fucking break. We never have men write in. And now I'm like putting him on blast. Tyler, I know you can handle it because you handle Tyler, it a lot worse already- when that priest climbed into your bed. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler already turned the volume down and unsubscribed from us. Tyler's so. like, we're never listening to this bullshit again. Yeah. I don't blame Hello, you. all. I just moved in with my girlfriend and best believe I asked if this old ass house was haunted before I moved in. She said no. And I don't know if she didn't notice or she didn't want to be alone in this or what, but I may have to cut her loose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no longer gay. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. Yay. Straight. Um... <laughs> It says, just kidding. I have noticed little things like creaky floors and strange shadows along and along with just the feeling of not being alone when I was the only one in the house. Mm -mm. I used to live in an apartment, so I would naturally dismiss the sounds of footsteps upstairs. But now I have to remind myself there is no upstairs. So what the heck was that? I hate that. Ew, there's no upstairs? And you just hear sounds upstairs. Ew. Okay. One night I had this terrible nightmare where I was in this old kitchen with people I didn't know, just talking and whatnot. Then I started noticing that there were keyholes in the wall and they were numbered. Huh? Either our brains are wild or, I mean, that, feel, that feels like it's planted. There's there's no way a brain can just conjure that up to me. And the, But then, I mean, that is totally something well, a brain could conjure up, but say, I just refuse I to believe I've, it. I've read a few uh, of my dream that I write down in my notes app sometimes, and I'm like, what the fuck was I on? You know, like, I don't know. I feel like our brains are pretty crazy, but continue. Okay. There were keyholes in the wall, and they were numbered. I was about to ask what they were when the guy to my right uh, handed me a funky-looking key. I put it in the first keyhole and turned it. Then weird stuff started happening. Started. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Each key would initiate some kind of horrible trial that was centered around one individual in the group. This is a horror movie. This is um, a very scary dream. I don't like it. This is I'm Saw. So- this feels like Saw. <laughs> <laughs> but all we had... Okay, so a uh, horrible trial that was centered around an individual. But this all sounds we like had, a Kafka story. Like, yeah. genuinely. I Okay. But we all had to finish the trail in order to get to the next key. The trial, oh, the trial. maybe? The trial. Yeah. Uh, so we finally get to the 10th keyhole. When we turn the key, I start falling backwards. And when I was supposed to hit the ground, I actually went through the floor to some kind of sunken place where I couldn't move. And I was being tortured by spirits. What the fuck is happening? It was terrifying. And once I was done being tortured, I woke up in the dream back in the old house and had an 11th key in my hand. (laughs) And M Call was outside Hollywood, honk, this is honking fucking the U haul. Like, come on, <laughs> get out of there. <laughs> My body was shaking because of how scared I was, and others were like, "Let's stop playing the game for uh, for now, since it's really the taking game? a toll on us." What a fun game! This is <laughs> Saw. You're right, M. <laughs> like, what the fuck? The game? I know. My body was shaking. I and others were like, "Let's stop playing the game for now." Um, and I was like, what? We can we can stop doing all this shit with the keys? Like, finally realizing, like, we could have just Wait never done any of this. Uh, we we could stop doing all this shit with the keys. Why didn't we stop earlier? Anyway, yeah. I woke up in real life and started getting dressed for work, kissed my girlfriend goodbye, and then was alone in the house. I'm sitting at my vanity when I hear and feel several knocks underneath the hardwood floor directly beneath my feet. No. 
It had to have been six or seven hard and rapid knocks. It wasn't my girlfriend because I had her send me a picture of her in her classroom to rule her out. (laughs) Prove that you're not here. Oh, God. So either someone is living in the basement or something from the sunken place found me in real life. What the fuck? Anywho, that's why I drink uh, copious amounts of cheap boxed wine. I've been listening for years and you and if you made it this far thank you for reading Brittany. that's wild the fact that like even if there's not actually something in the sunken place maybe there's something that like knew what you were dreaming and just yeah, it's almost like parallel yes it like paralleled the experience to scare I you i mean if blaze were here he would say pipes but i <laughs> <laughs> but like it was someone from her dream for sure 1000 percent. 1000 percent. it's just like what are the odds you wake up you're home alone and then like remember this bang 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 oh i have been in places where i have just like perpetual horrible nightmares that don't feel like my own dreams and like i remember thinking like this fucking place has bad energy that's why i'm Mm -hmm. having these dreams so i mean maybe that's something to do with it Or, like, maybe you're reliving, like, a residual haunting. Like, maybe someone did die in the basement. Or maybe someone did die under the foundation. Ooh, what if they're trying to send you a message? (laughs) Woof. Leave me alone. (laughs) It'd be really crazy if she woke up and all of a sudden there was a 12th key. (laughs) Oh, what if she found a key on the the vanity? Oh, my God. I just have no time for it. Thank you, Brittany. Please tell me a story. (laughs) Here's another story. This is called Adorable Yet Haunted Christmas Teddy Bears. Okay, so this is for me, definitely. Thank you, Eva. Mm -hmm. Um, It's from Zoe, she, her. uh, And it says, hi, guys. I love the podcast, and I thought you'd enjoy this festive story of mine as the season is fast approaching. Eyeball emoji. Eyeballs emoji looking Mm -hmm. over, which makes me not trust her immediately. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, here is the story. My dad passed away when I was a baby. Oh, no. And over the years, my mom has given me a few things of his to keep and remember him by. Well, that's awful. I'm sorry about that. One of these things was a trio of festive teddy bear ornaments. They're wearing pajamas and each holding a different Christmas present. I set up my tree. I know. (laughs) It's really sweet, actually. I set up my tree that year and sat them beneath it. One day I got home from work to find one of them sat on a different table in the living room. Figuring my boyfriend had moved it, I put it back and carried on. A week or so later, I found another one had fallen from the table the tree sat on and had rolled across the room. We didn't have pets back then, so I was annoyed at my boyfriend for knocking them over continuously when he (laughs) knew they were sentimental. You're like, those are from my dead dad. Like, stop moving them. I'd be like, get your hands off it. (laughs) Um, Let's see. Then, a few nights later, we were sat in our bedroom when I needed something from the living room. So I walked through. Only to find one of these freaking bears perched perfectly on the back of the sofa facing the Christmas tree. Oh, my God. And like, part been... of me wants to think like, oh, it's your dad. And Yeah, right. And then it suddenly becomes poltergeisty and you're like, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I'm like, hang on. <laughs> is would dad do this? Like, is this that's my biggest thing? fear when I die first and I haunt you is you're not right. going to be able to tell if I'm being an asshole or a poltergeist has entered I the think chat. I'll be, like, I think I'll know. I think I'll know it's. But, like, what if I wanted to fuck with you and I just, like, put Leon upside down? Like, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) No, what I'm saying is I think I would assume it's option A. It's M being an asshole every time. I don't think I would even have room to consider poltergeist. Let's put it this way. This is a pinky promise now that... Give me your fucking pinky. Well, I want to hear what it is first. (laughs) You'll want this. I promise. Give me your pinky. Okay. That if I go first and I'm haunting you and I do something wild, you'll know it's me if when you say stop, I respect your wishes. Oh, okay. But if it doesn't stop, you need to fucking call somebody. Okay, so because you'll be, okay, pinky promise. Because yeah. you'll be over there. Like going, if I, this one isn't me. Like if I take Leona and just put her upside down, just kind of like swing her around <laughs> and she's having a good time, and you go, okay, and stop, I'll put her right side up for a little bit. But if she keeps being upside down, you're in trouble, girl. You need then to ends in the corner going, it wasn't me this time, <laughs> I swear. <laughs> uh, it's the, the same it, yeah. It's this creepy demon over here. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Um, well, then I expect you to kick that demon out of my house. But anyway, we'll talk about this. I'll be week. trying, but like, okay, I'm only I one pre- person. I appreciate like, that. I'm a new ghost. I don't know what I'm doing yet, you know? You're holding my child upside down. You're pretty good at it. I'm like... <laughs> 
you know, one skill at a time. You're a natural. Okay. All right. So this bear is perched perfectly on the back of the sofa facing the Christmas tree. It had been very deliberately placed. There was no way it could have ever been knocked or thrown and landed in that position. I love that the first few times it was like, look what I'm doing. And she's like, well, maybe it's just a coincidence. And then it's like, okay, fine. I'll put it somewhere like impossible. Right, right, right. You know, like you have to prove it almost. Um. It had been very deliberately placed. There was no way it could have been knocked or thrown and landed in that position. I walked back to our room and asked my boyfriend why he had put the bear there and that if it was a prank, it wasn't funny. Mm. I got really upset and he told me firmly he had not touched or knocked them at all over the last few weeks and had definitely not put it on the sofa. I am not particularly sensitive, but I had had weird feelings and experiences in that flat, and so I stood in the hallway and loudly told whatever it was not to move things and that it wasn't welcome. The bears never moved again, though I've never put them out in the years since. Looking back, I don't know if it was a sign from my dad or another family member or just something messing with me, but either way, I'm glad it stopped. You know, that I think, um, I always think back to what you said of like when you saw your grandpa the apparition after you had passed and you felt like safe even though there's like mm-hmm. a man in your room you know and yeah. i feel like i feel like if it were your dad you wouldn't be maybe so freaked i don't know but i don't that know would be, i don't know yeah i would imagine i guess that's if they're like fully in the room with you i have no idea how it works yeah but yeah there there are times when like things happen and i know that like it's good vibes and there's other times where i know right. it's bad vibes you know right i guess all you have to do is all, all you can do is like trust your gut on that um so Zoe says, maybe this year I'll get them out and let you know if they decide to move about again, which obviously <laughs> I'm going to say, do it. do it and film it. Like keep a running security <gasps> camera pointed at them. Oh, we could do a live stream. We'll just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe this year, get them out. Okay. Hope you enjoyed reading. Somehow when you type out your most profound experiences, they just feel incredibly boring compared to everyone else's, Zoe. No, it's not. You it's not. made it on the I, listeners episode. What are you talking the about? Hell yeah. The Christmas one, believe it or not. Um, not that that means anything because we all forgot it was the Christmas one before we. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you, Zoe. That is uh, creepy. I do also wonder if it was a family member, like a friendly spirit or like. Something you gotta start just... doing yes or no's with it you gotta be like are you my dad and then if and move one but if you're not my dad move two you know or don't move, move two of the any. bears oh yeah i also wonder was it one was it one specific bear or was it like mm. the, the three different ones were all doing different things hmm. yeah i'd anyway. be like if like yes or no move the bear to the left or move the bear to the right you know yeah and then I'd be like, shit, which one was left and right? I forget which one means <laughs> yes. Like, Wait, my left or your left? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, exactly. Um, okay, we've got one final one, and it sounds like it's going to be a good ender. Mm. Um, it's titled, My Dog's Supernatural Secret Santa. Hello? Okay, I'm in. I'm on. I'm in. I'm a, on it. A spectral jar of peanut butter. <laughs> uh, <laughs> tennis balls rolling down the hall. That would be my nightmare because I would probably break my ankle. But yes, that no, for Gio, like... it'd be just a bunch of dirty socks. Just it would just, and those there. actually do kind of just appear around the house. But that's not really a ghost. That's that just kind of my bad loves, laundry skills. Yeah, that dog loves a dirty sock. He sure does. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh and this is from uh adrian who uses she her pronouns thank you for normalizing pronouns uh hi eva m and christine i would like to dedicate this story to the fur babies of and that's why we dream Aww. i love your podcast and have always wanted to write in my numerous paranormal stories i decided with the holidays coming up now would be the time to stop procrastinating and send in a story from last christmas in case you are looking for festive stories and your episode this year Yay! Eva was Thank you. on it. This story revolves but... around my three beloved huskies. That's so sweet. Named Rainer, Aurora, and Odin. Whoa. Those are all perfect husky names. <laughs> wow. Before how I crack into it, Rainer? let me. Pl- I know. What is Before how I... you spell it? R A Y N O R. Whoa. Rainor. I was just curious. Before I crack into it, first let me paint the scene. The way my living room is set up, we have an L-shaped sectional that borders the front wall of our house. Um, And it's under a big window at the front of the door. Making a makeshift hallway leading from the door into the house, then ending opening up to the living room. Okay. 
Our dogs love to greet all guests by jumping up on the couch and lining up one by one <laughs> on the part of the sectional that makes that turns the area into a hallway. Aww. You know what I mean? Like when you walk yeah, in, they, the they, it's like you're walking between the wall and the couch, sort of yes. the back of the couch. Yes. Okay, and the dogs line up for greetings. They line okay, up that's for the snuggles. cutest thing I've ever heard. Um, our eldest husky, Rainer, is Ooh. known as a woolly husky, which means he has an extra long fluffy coat, wow. making him look particularly wolf-like. <gasps> they tend to be quite the jump scare for anyone who isn't used to coming over. <laughs> and imagine the first thing you see after the door opens is three large wolf-like dogs at eye level right in your yeah, face. I was going to say, they're also like elevated to your height yes. now because they're on the couch. <laughs> One day last December, about a week before Christmas, my husband and I decided to take a nap after returning home from Christmas shopping. While I was napping, I heard what sounded like two women whispering. I figured that I was either in a dreamlike state and imagining the voices or I was hearing two spirits talking to each other. Either, either way, <laughs> yeah, could be 50-50. Either way, I couldn't bring myself to be too concerned because I was six months pregnant and was not about to get up and investigate. Oh, forget it. Side note, a little thing about me is that I'm a witch practitioner and have my own clairsentient. Mm. Oh, clairsentient abilities. Oh, okay. I didn't read the next part. I have my own clairsentient abilities and have had experiences with spirits throughout my whole life. Not too much later after hearing the voices, I began to hear some rustling. The sound that most dog owners know as the sound of your dog getting into something they shouldn't be. I, I mean, like immediately was like, shit, I know. Still, I, know. I couldn't be bothered to get up from the warmth of my bed. And we finally finished our nap and we go out into the living room to see what our mischievous babies have gotten into. But all we saw was them playing with a stuffed alligator dog toy. Funny enough, while out shopping earlier, one of the toys I'd gotten my dogs as a Christmas present was a stuffed alligator, only I knew I had hidden their toys so they couldn't find them. Mm. Puzzled on how they managed to get the toy out of the closet I hid it in, I took the toy from them and realized it wasn't the same stuffed alligator. What? <laughs> I thought, well, this is weird. Then I saw another toy on the floor that I'd never seen before. I asked my husband if I had bought these or if he had bought these, and he told me he hadn't. Looking wow. around some more, I then find a grocery bag that was tied closed and had been torn open by my dogs with another three dog toys in it. What? All the toys still had tags on them, and we were so confused. We knew these toys had not been here before our nap, and we thought maybe one of our family members had stopped and dropped them off while we were sleeping. The only thing was the front door was locked, and now we do have a few family members who have a spare key to our home, but all of them swear up and down that none of them had dropped off the toys. My side of the family is full of pranksters, and we really thought they were just messing with us to get a little to get us a little paranoid. Eventually, we figured someone would own up to it, but no one ever did. It's worth what? noting that neither of us had heard any knocking on the door while we were sleeping, and even if we had slept through it, we had we wouldn't be able to sleep through the sound of all three huskies howling if someone was at the door. True, you'd you'd know. Like I huskies feel like are loud. <laughs> the huskies are talkers, you know. <laughs> Uh, almost a year later and my dog Secret Santa still remains a mystery and I like to think the gifts were brought uh, to them by my late brother who passed away a few years ago. Aww. He he loved the dogs and this isn't the first supernatural incident that's happened with the dog since his passing. On multiple occasions I've found my dogs let out of their crates when I know their crates were locked. <laughs> Even That's finding... me as a ghost. Let them free. <laughs> <laughs> and even finding the lock, the locking system still in place. So I know it's not that they were just wiggling it loose. I believe oh my, my brother. I believe my brother <laughs> likes to come play with them. Oh. Um, and thank you for reading my story. I'll be sure to write in some more stories another time. Happy holidays. <gasps> what a fucking story. And like for them to be the same type of toys that you got them, like it was an alligator and That's like weird. Okay, can I tell you something? Like, because I hmm. I don't know if you could tell, probably not because you were reading, but I had like kind of a reaction when you said that. Why? And I'm like sweating a lot. Okay. Why? Because I recently was reading a book about like signs from your past loved ones by Laurel and Jackson, who's like a psychic medium, and um, I was reading it, and I it's like it said, you know, be come up with a specific sign um for your loved ones to like show you or whatever and so I came up with a sign for my grandmother to show me and I was like if you are around can you bring up an alligator shut up <laughs> dead serious <laughs> well your grandma's reason, high apparently the reason I said alligator is because 
weirdly, I couldn't think of a sign. I was like, I don't know. Like, it has to be specific, but also, like, something memorable. You know, I just, like, couldn't come up with something that, like, made sense. And then that night I had a dream that I walked into the dining room of my house and saw a giant stuffed alligator on the table. And I woke up and I was like, okay, I guess stuffed, I guess stuffed alligator is my sign. And literally when you said stuffed alligator, playing with a stuffed alligator, like my whole body just, I went into Tyler's like freeze mode. I was like, wait, what did you just say? (laughs) You and Tyler just sitting on the same bed freaked out about Yeah, with the priest is just like, (laughs) (laughs) Um, anyway, that just like got me like, really wow anyway it's a final so. christmas holiday miracle isn't hi it? oma uh oh my god sorry eva just texted i just got a stuffed alligator at the party i went to with my dad this weekend what what in the world is going on <laughs> it, i don't have anything about a stuffed alligator i don't Here's know what my to- <laughs> you're gonna like leave the room and be like what's that plastic bag on the doorknob right ah! right right it'll be um, a bunch I, of chewed up dog toys from the husky <laughs> like slobbery toys um I wanted to also say that I do have one more sign that I, for my grandmother that I'm not going to reveal, but maybe it'll oh. like come up, you know, in some other future episode. Um, okay. But that's pretty, that's pretty wild. So anyway, stuff wow. Well, uh, tell your mom. She would like that. Yeah. Well, it's my dad's mom. So oh, um, I'll tell him, but he, oh my God, he was a, a cute little photo with the stuffed alligator. That's adorable. Um, Aw. Anyway. I, I had, weird. I had no idea. Well, geez. I mean, that feels a little, uh. I don't know how that works, how the universe works, no, but either. that's it's super eerie. Ooh, you guys should read that book though. I put it in the uh the newsletter, like mm-hmm. what do you call it? Uh recommendation a few months ago, but um it's called Signs, I think, by Laura Lynn Jackson. Anyway, cool. it's really like comforting to read. So mm. wow. wow. Okay. What well, a tale, dude. <laughs> there you have it. All right. All right. We do have one more story. Uh, this is called A Christmas Ghost Story. Per- what if this is where my other sign comes in? I doubt it. Okay. Uh, a Christmas Ghost Story Personal. I'm not sure how else to start this. But- oh, this is from Abra. She, her. I'm not sure how else to start this besides saying, with no doubt in any of our minds, my mother's house is haunted as fuck. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, goodness me. Oh, oh my. Oh, my, my. My mother's house is haunted as fuck, like poltergeist shit, and they've always loved me. Oh, no. From the first time we stepped foot into what would be my room, great, we've heard a little girl. But in all the years I lived there, I had never seen her until Christmas 2017. Mm. I was the first in my family to be done getting ready, a Christmas miracle, to be honest. (laughs) Uh, Anyway. Oh, Abra. I'm sorry. To Christine, like Kadabra. To oh, M, oh, oh, oh. like the Pokemon. I understand. I understand. Um, she, her, either way. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Abra. Uh, anyway. Blah, 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 blah. I was the first of my family to be done getting ready. A Christmas miracle, to be honest. Sitting alone downstairs in our living room, which displays a staircase prominently, something caught my eye. There was a little girl sitting on our MF staircase. <laughs> fucking bye. Bye. She didn't seem to notice me at first. Ew. <sighs> and as I was sitting there trying to figure out if she was real or not, she looked up at me with, in no exaggeration, the biggest eyes I've ever seen. Ugh. They weren't okay. all black, shout out black eyed <gasps> kids, but they were a special kind of dark against her pale skin and long dark hair. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Oh, no. I would get the same random violent sickness for years after this, no matter how healthy I was prior. But That feels like on, a black-eyed kid. But only on Christmas. Oh. <laughs> that's extra evil. That is pretty That's pretty. But awful. you're right. It does, because that is one of the side effects. Like, does they make you, like, really Ill. Ill. Yeah. Ooh. Like, there was, like, those stories I did where, like, all they did was, like, look through the peephole at one of the black-eyed kids, and they had, like, they were diagnosed the next week with like really intense cancer or like something. Cancer, like... yeah. Ugh. <sighs> okay, um, but only on Christmas. While this really sucked, as I love Christmas, it did get me out of midnight mass a few times. And then it says "so slay," and it's spelled S L E I G H. Abra is like bringing this. Like house. we're gonna okay. make a good thing out of this. Yeah, I love that for you. But our story doesn't end there. That next year, my partner at the time, Josh, he, him, came to live with us for a while. He went across the hall to our bathroom that was equally as unsettling as my bedroom. When he came back, he looked shook as hell. Mm -mm. I asked, what's the matter? And he said, I know this sounds crazy, but I swear to God, I just saw a little girl in your bathroom. (gasps) 
I asked what she looked like. Quote, she had long, dark hair and she was really pale, but her eyes, dude, they were massive. Okay. I had never told him that story. I was going to say, mm. but if you've got a boyfriend that's living with you, you might want to warn him about that damn house. I love like, This is like that other couple who was like, I asked my girlfriend if it was on and she said no. I would be, like, if lies, I moved lies. in with, if Allison's house had a little girl that makes you violently <laughs> ill on holidays, <laughs> Giant eyes. I would be like, I did not. Okay. It's like that uninformed consent. I moved yes. into this damn yes. house and you didn't warn me that it's I like, could run into this like, that's a lie girl? by omission is what yeah. that is called. And I'm <laughs> pretty sure like, in a court of law, I'd the- be right. I'd be like, Jesus Christ. Like, like, had I known I would never enjoy Christmas again, I might have not moved uh, yeah. in here. Had I known, I'd be vomiting every Christmas. Yeah, forget <laughs> it. Uh, and then she says, spooky Christmas to all and to all a good night. Abra, like Kadabra, like the Pokemon. <laughs> oh, got it. What the fuck? I okay. have to know if the boyfriend started getting violently ill. Oh, great point. Well, I wonder if he saw, but it sounds like he saw her on a different day, like not on Christmas. Like I wonder, she saw I the would... girl on Christmas. I wonder if like that same thing happened to him that day of the year, but he yeah. just hasn't put it together, you know? Yeah, I would be like, go back through your photos and everything, figure out a date. We got to keep track of that. Time. Yeah. And then like, I know it says your former partner, but like check on that day, check every year. Hey, how are you feeling today? <laughs> just, and honestly, just if he did in. something really fucked up for you to make him your former partner, then maybe the little girl was helping you out. I don't Great know. Point. Maybe. maybe she's like, get the fuck out of here. Who the hell maybe are you? Maybe she was like, I see you with my big fucking eyes. I don't like what's going I on here. I can see you <laughs> with my giant owl eyes. Uh, uh, whoa. That really does sound like a black eyed kid. Sorry. Yeah. I don't, it's, uh, but it sounds like, like she's on her way. Somebody. Is that, <laughs> it's like black eyed kid in training. She's evolving. Yeah. Um, in training. Yeah. Ouch. I wonder who invited her in, though. Like, don't they have to be invited in? Maybe the previous maybe it tenant. Was, I yeah, know. I was going to say, maybe like a previous family member. And that's an interesting, um, for like like a philosophy of like, if you're a black-eyed kid or like a vampire or something, you've mm-hmm. been invited in. Does that mean the foundation? Once right. you're like, welcomed on, it's forever? Or if is there's it new property an- owners, do they now need to invite you in? Or is it like yeah. a, you're grandfathered in? Yeah, or bl- grand black eyed kid it in. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you get it. <laughs> um, yeah, interesting. Well, let us know <laughs> since you seem let to be us going know. through it. Um, wow. All right. Well, I think that's all of our stories. So thank you everybody for sending in stories. Happy yeah. holidays. I hope everyone's having a a good December. Also, um. I know it's December 1st, so hopefully so far it's going well. A good December, yeah. Don't worry. If you're not, there's still time to make it up. <laughs> this is also a quick reminder that we are back on tour next month, oh! and uh, that does give me a full-blown panic attack. I'll, I suddenly gonna, like have to use the potty. I don't like that I'm going to hang up, loud. and then I'm going to scream into a pillow about it, but you should in you might enjoy it as the audience member. So um, if you would like to come to one of our apparently Northeast shows, then yeah. you can get yourself some tickets. Or and this Indianapolis. Is your last, or Indianapolis. This is your last chance to see On the Rocks because when we go back out on tour in the fall, it will be a different show. So this is your last shot at seeing On the Rocks. So. And Canada. Um, Sorry. I'm just thinking of where we're going. We and some, um, mid, mid Midwest shows too. And that's why we drink.